Ida Wita is the world record holder. He set the record in 1985, and you see the American record has also stood since 1985. And the favorite in the race is Nouradine Morsali of Algeria. He spent last year at Riverside Community College in California when he was a 20-year-old 20 20 -year ranked number one in the world. He won the World Indoor Championship this year in world record time, and he is indeed the favorite. And Morsley is the man that Saeed Awida, the world record holder, calls the runner of the 1990s, the man who will take over the mantle from Saeed Awida. And there is the world record holder and 1984 Olympic champion. Saeed Awida, he's so good they have a stamp with his picture on it in Morocco. And of course, Morsali's idol, Saeed Awida, the world record holder. Also in the race, another Kenyan. We've seen so many runners from Kenya succeed at the distance events. David Cabet of Kenya is going to try to win the 1500. He used to be a high jumper, a paratrooper. He's made more than 15 parachute jumps. If the pace is slow, this man will be a danger. And from Germany, Jens Peter Harold, who won the bronze medal at the 1988 Olympics in Seoul. And he won that by sneaking down the home stretch and outrunning people. Again, if the pace is slow, he's dangerous. He looked better than anybody in the semifinals. Here is a look at the key competitors in this race with Morsali and Awita, the favorites. Fermin Cacho of Spain could be dangerous. Cacho was second to Morsley at the World Indoor Championships and is the only man to have beaten Morsley this year. He beat him at 800 meters. And Nuruddin Morsali, he has a unique style of running, Craig. It looks like he's never working hard, and yet no one seems to catch him. Well, the thing is, he hasn't been pressed yet this year. That's why he's the overwhelming favorite. But I talked to his manager and his coach. That's his brother is his coach, and they're, they're worried. They don't know what to do. They've never been in this position themselves, even though they were both world-class 1,500-meter runners. He is the overwhelming favorite, but how should he win? If he lets the pace go slow, yes, he should be able to outkick everyone, but that lets the door open to people like Cabet and Harold to run down the home stretch. But if he pushes it himself, he could just become the sacrificial lamb for everyone else. This was your event, Craig, and I know you have a special place in your heart for it. Uh, how does it stand in the world of track and field as they get ready to start the race? Well, of course, Tom, it's the number one event in track and field. That 100-meter stuff was pretty exciting <laughs> earlier in the week, but everyone knows this is the best event in track and field. <laughs> and Nuruddin Morsali, the favorite, is right among the leaders as they head down the back stretch for the first time. And once again, in a major championship race, it has developed into a tactical race already. All 12 runners bunched together. Nobody wants to lead. And Fermin Cacho of Spain just passed for the lead by Cabet of Kenya. So Cabet of Kenya, Cacho of Spain running 1-2, and Morsali down on the inside coming up to third. They'll have three laps to go when they get up to this mark. And this is an interesting situation. In the 1980 Olympics, the pace was just this slow. A man named Jürgen Straub from East Germany struck out with about two laps to go. He was the man that no one talked about winning a medal. And he said to Sebastian Coe and Steve Ovette, the great milers of that time, I'm going to try to make this a fast race. He was rewarded with a silver medal. In 1984, Jose Abascal from Spain did the same thing. He was rewarded with a bronze medal. And in 1988, with with two laps to go, Peter Rono, the young Kenyan, struck out for home. He was rewarded with a, with a gold medal. Right now, the pace is slow, 58 seconds for the first lap. If it continues to be this slow, it may be that someone else will strike out for gold, as those people have tried to do in the past. Kabet of Kenya is the leader, and Nuruddin Morsali is second. Morsali in second. He studies tapes of other athletes to try to figure out what the best tactics will be. Nobody has had tapes of Kibet, though. He is an unknown runner, an unknown quantity from Kenya. Kibet is first. Morsali second. Karochi of Kenya is third. Harold of Germany is moving up in the white to take the fourth spot right now. Cacho of Spain is in there, and Awita also in striking distance. Well, the best thing you can say for Morsali right now is that he's perfectly placed. Even if it is a slow pace, he's in a position to use his fantastic finishing speed to go by. 157 at 800 meters. And this is not a pedestrian pace. This is not a high school race as we've seen in some major championships in terms of pace. But it is a slow pace. It's going to be a big sprint at the end. Cabet sneaking a look back, and he's opened up a couple of meters on Morsali, who is still in second place. Morsali has run the three fastest times in the world in the 1500 meters this year. I'll tell you what the athletes are feeling right now is incredible nervousness. They know that the race really hasn't begun. This is like a warm-up run at the moment, and the real running is only now beginning. And it begins with Nuruddin Morsali taking the lead with one lap to go. 
look who's right there in second place, Saeed Awida, the man who's always dreamed of winning an Olympic or World Championship 1500 meters, two-time Olympic champion at 5,000, but now he's looking in trouble as Morsali is running away from the field right now. Nuruddin Morsali opening up a cushion as they approach the turn for home. Moving into second, Karochi of Kenya as Awida has fallen back. Harold of Germany now takes third. Morsali is still within himself at this point. He's not even going all out. Karochi, the man who beat him at the World Junior Championships in 1988, being left in his wake. Now coming to the top of the home stretch, Nuruddin Morsali has the lead, and he's opening up ground on the rest of the field. Morsali with a big lead as they come through the stretch. Karochi is second, Harold third, and Kacho fourth. No contest here. Morsali easily the world champion. One of the most dominating victories in the history of track and field in the 1500 meters. This was one of the best fields in history. He demolished it. Yeah. 51.6 seconds for his last 400 meters. Embracing one of the officials, and there's Amar Bramia, a man who never made it to these top ranks in 1500 meter running, his manager, and there's his brother, Abdur Rahmani. They call him the Prince of Peace in Algeria, the Prince of the Tracks. This man can't be beaten no matter what the strategy, it seems. The world record is his for the taking at any moment. An amazing comp combination. An amazing combination of endurance and speed, and they won't even let him take the victory lap. That's a shame. They're but trying to turn him the other way. That was where the high jumpers were lining up and so they point him in the other direction and now he will get his victory lap and a well-deserved one as you said a dominating performance and uh, what about the what about the Algerians? Bulmerka won a gold medal earlier, and they got a bronze in the steeplechase. Uh, this is a surprise from a little country, a uh, developing country like Algeria, making a splash on the world scene. And how about Africa? They won the 800 meters now, the 1500 meters. It's Kenyans winning the steeplechase and the 10,000 meters. We'll see the 5,000 meters coming up later. Could be an African sweep all the way from 800 through 10,000 meters. And so Nuruddin Morsali with the biggest margin of victory in world championship or Olympic competition since Kip Kano beat Jim Ryan by almost three seconds at the 1968 Olympics.